Our next speaker is Konstantin Fedorovsky from uh, Lomonosov Moscow State University and St. Petersburg State University. And the title of his talk is Choose Conjecture in Bergman Spaces. Thank you, Roman, for the introduction. And um, first of all, of course, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this meeting. And uh, moreover, I would like to express my very, very sincere and deep um, thanks to people who make this conference, which is very interesting from scientific point of view, but moreover, which allow us to come here to meet in this very nice place and in some sense to forget about more than one year isolation, which was very tired for all of us. So it and uh, moreover, this uh, format of a conference with mixed online and offline talks was extremely hard for the organizers, so they make a very, very good and very heavy job. So thank you so much for making this event. Well, and um, my today talks is based on the joint work with Evgeny Abakumov uh, from uh, uh, Gustav Eiffel University Paris and uh, Alexander Boric from Aix Marcel University. Uh, so this is recently published and available from Archive. The reference is in the slide. Well, and the first um, the first starting point of uh, of our work was the following question, which was posed by Chui in uh, 1971, and uh, Surprisingly, this question, which uh, looks very, very simple and almost elementary, is still open. His question was how to put and point charges on the unit circle um, in order to minimize the average uh, strength of the corresponding electrostatic field as assuming the forces inversely proportion proportional to the distance. Well, this question. Uh, open in some, in some sense the, li the line uh, of um, studying approximation property of so-called simplest fractions or sums of Cauchy kernels with unit uh, coefficients. Well, and uh, let me uh, define explicitly the uh, functions we are dealing with. So by simplest fraction, as it was already mentioned, we um, mean, well, a rational function in, the, in a complex variable having this form that is, is a sum of uh, Cauchy kernels with unit uh, coefficients. Of course, the points a k may be may have multiplicity. Uh, alternatively, mm, the simplest fractions uh, can be represented as a logarithmic derivative of, the, of polynomials with. Uh, mm, um, zeros at uh, these points a k or alternatively the Cauchy transform of uh, some unit direct measures uh, supported at these uh, points all okay this are this our main object uh, why this uh, these functions are in, uh, interesting in the context of approximation theory uh, the first, uh, the first uh, question, which is really related to um, approximative properties of simplest fractions, was uh, posed uh, in the middle of the uh, 20th century by MacLean, uh, who asked uh, the, 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 who posed the following problem. Um, well, before uh, stating the question, I, uh, well, let me uh, say uh, that uh, some set E in the complex plane is called the polynomial approximation set relative to some domain G. If every zero free holomorphic function in this domain G uh, can be approximated locally uniformly in this domain, that is, uh, uniform, uniform and complex subsets of G, uh, by polynomials with uh, having zeros only in this set E. Um, MacLean have shown that every Jordan domain with rectifiable boundary is a polynomial. Uh, so, in the, in the case of Jordan domain with rectifiable boundary, the boundary of this domain is a polynomial approximation set relative to our domain. 
uh, this research was um, uh, substantially developed by Jacob Corivar, uh, who considered in a um, very general situation of uh, general simply connected domain, not necessarily Jordan, not necessarily verifiable boundary, and um, his res uh, his result was the was the following. Uh, well, that if G is some bounded simply connected domain, and um, if some bounded set, it was not mentioned here that it should be bounded, but uh, this is the case uh, such that this set does not intersect G. Then the following uh, four uh, conditions are equivalent, uh, and we, um, we need to pay attention for uh, some of them. Of course, the, fir the, the first condition is exactly the answer to MacLean question. So it's a set of a polynomial approximation set relative to J. Well, uh, the, ne the second uh, um, equivalent uh, condition is that uh, we are able to approximate just a Cauchy kernel uh, with any point in E, and here the and here the simplest fractions are appear. The third equivalent uh, condition is that uh, there is a system of uh, finite families of points such that the respective uh, simplest fractions approximates zero, just one function, just zero function, locally uniformly in J. And the fourth is some topological description of this set, which are Okay, not necessary for our today uh, consideration. But um, I uh, decided to stop in this theorem because it shows how, uh, how the simplest fractions comes uh, to the action. Well, um, uh, the next, um, okay, uh, this Corivar theorem has a very uh, interesting uh, corollary. So uh, let uh, K be some compact uh, subset of G with connected complement. And then the family of uh, uh, simplest fractions with poles in the boundary is dense in the space A of K, uh, consisting of all continuous functions of K, which are holomorphic. So the analog of disk algebra with respect to the compact K, uh, set K. Uh, notice that uh, here, of course, there are no uh, restrictions about uh, zero free or not. Uh, glomorphic functions, just any glomorphic functions. And this result was quite recently um, and uh, significantly extended by Piotr Baradin from uh, Moscow State University, who proved, uh, the, who proved the following result. Uh, let now k and y be two compact sets in the complex plane, such that the compact set k has a connected complement as here. Uh, uh, well, these two compact sets are disjoint, and moreover, the compact set K uh, belong to the um, so-called polynomial convex hull of Y. Then, this, uh, so in some sense, Y surround our K. In this uh, setting, um, the simplest fractions with poles on Y are dense also in the space A of K. Well, this results lies in a, some distance, positive distance from our problem, from our considerations, but they are uh, um, in very, uh, very um, close uh, relating to um, our thinking, both uh, methodologically, uh, sometimes ideologically, and of course uh, they, are, they are linked uh, by um, Working with this uh, with the simplest fractions. Now uh, let me return to explicit statement of choose uh, problem. Um, well, well uh, he um, was interested in in question whether the simplest fractions uh, with poles on the unit circle um, the set is dense in the Bergman space A one in the unit disk. And uh, in connection with this question. Uh, he formulate the following conjecture um, for any positive integer n and for any families of points in the unit circle. Well, the uh, L1 norm in the unit disk of the simplest of this simplest fraction is always greater than the uh, L1 norm of the simplest fraction with equispaced uh, poles. Equispaced poles. Well. Um, 
let me fix uh, the, the, this notation uh, for the future and um, well it can be uh, readily verified that uh, the, L, the L1 norm of uh, this uh, simple fraction of course is bounded from uh, below by some absolute constant so if a uh, true conjecture is um, true then it uh, would imply that the simplest fractions is, are not dense in our space A1. Okay, just one year after uh, making this uh, conjecture, Newman uh, proved, uh, but by some other method, uh, proved that the simplest fractions uh, are not dense. More precisely, he established the following, the following estimate, and it's not very difficult, uh, not very difficult result. However, the original choose uh, question remains open, uh, and it's is open just now in, in spite of um, a lot of interesting results obtained in approximation by simplest fractions. And uh, now we are at the point to um, where we start our work, uh, thinking about uh, this uh, question, the choose question. Uh, we um, start to we try to understand it in the in the Hilbert space uh, setting. And of course, the best uh, candidate to uh, work with this um, uh, to work with this uh, question is, of course, the weighted Bergman spaces in the unit disk. So here I uh, recall the definition of uh, the standard weighted Bergman space with a uh, power 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 weight uh, r and power alpha, um, and uh, more more generally, uh, uh, the weighted Bergman space with um, more or less general radial weight j. Um, well, it's uh, not difficult uh, to check that uh, the simplest fractions uh, belong to our spaces A to j, if and only if uh, our weight satisfies this linear type condition, uh, the origin. And um, therefore, mm, for all alpha positive, uh, the simplest fractions, for example, belongs to our standard
We have the and for alpha bigger than one, we have the following estimate, where c1 is an absolute constant, but here is something dependent on alpha c2, and uh, it's not very easy to uh, check how it depends on alpha. But uh, it means that the asymptotically the space distribution should be the should be asymptotically optimal. Well, and uh, the next. Uh, well, and the next um, the next result is, of course, the descri description of functions which can be approximated by simplest fractions in uh, our uh, Bergman's norm in our Bergman space. Well, and this uh, result is uh, true for any admissible weight. Uh, I recall that admissibility it's uh, just uh, the conditions that our spaces are in the space. So. The closure of simplest fractions in this space A to J is exactly the same if we have this behavior of weight. And for small weights, it gives all our space. So here it's a some dichotomic uh, picture. No, in some sense, nothing, all, everything. And uh, this uh, behavior of uh, simplest uh, fractions uh, are, um, are not very surprising because, uh, for example, in, in, some, in the work of um, Pratasov about approximation in LP in the, in the real line, uh, in some setting was the, sim was the similar situation. Uh, so more or less we are uh, able to approximate nothing or everything. Here is the situation is, uh, looks the same. So, and in, in particular for our, Ber for our Bergman weights, what we have is we have that um, uh, uh, the simplest fractions are closed nowhere than subset in a, a to alpha for alpha between 0 and 1, including 1, uh, while it's uh, dense uh, in A to alpha for alpha bigger than 1. And moreover, in the case alpha equal 1, it's also possible to say a bit more. To say a bit more. Uh, well, and uh, well, perhaps uh, I very, very briefly uh, show some results. Some uh, results which are uh, okay uh, are of independent interest, uh, but uh, for us it's um, essential uh, tools uh, for proof. And uh, the first estimate uh, was the so-called uh, I recall the Tom so-called Thomson theorem about also approximation by simplest fractions with some control. Of the uh, of their behavior, and uh, what we do, uh, we mm, we have proved uh, a bit uh, accurate uh, construction because look here the dependence of uh, the norm of the function uh, approximating function is only in the second term, not in the main one, and also some LP version, but uh, perhaps I have no time to stop in uh, here. Well, and uh, mm, well, and um, uh, let me uh, say something about some words about proof of the first uh, of the first theorem, uh, because uh, it uh, uses some interesting uh, um, constructions uh, uh, coming from uh, convex uh, uh, convex analysis. Um, well, and if we have our weight admissible, concave, and non-decreasing. Uh, um, we can uh, def okay uh, we can define this uh, this function phi j of t uh, of course uh, it's a two pi periodic function uh, on on the real 
line and um, the important uh, step the important lemma is that uh, for every function g coming from our theorem our admissible weights uh, this uh, function phi g uh, is strictly convex in the um, 0 to pi and moreover if we um, restrict ourselves to uh, power weights uh, to weight r in power alpha Bergman weights we have this function uh, phi alpha uh, which is strictly convex if uh, oh, oh, of course in uh, 0 to pi if and only if uh, our alpha is between 0 and 1 1 is included here well and um, this is the lemma from uh, convex analysis which uh, we was needed to, to prove because uh, look very very natural but we was not able to find it and uh, and this lemma um, okay so you can see that um, it's more or less about equi spaced equidistribution of uh, points and uh, how we how to how we use uh, how we use this lemma uh, since we are working in the, in the okay, we are working in the Hilbert space, so this is the inner product in uh, our space uh, A to J, and um, uh, okay, we consider the norm of um, our function of our simplest fraction. Write this in such a way. Well, and what we have here? Here we have uh, okay, this uh, con uh, fixed item. Well, plus this sum of, uh, of these quantities and we know by lemma 1 that this function uh, phi j is a convex uh, function so we are in uh, we are exactly in uh, the statement of uh, our lemma b okay uh, and applying this lemma we arrive uh, to the we arrive to the result that um, okay the minimum is attained if the points uh, and these points are equi spaced on T. So this is the um, uh, of course very brief scheme, even not sketch, just a scheme of the proof of theorem one. Uh, and um, um, okay, the the other result, the other the proof of other results is rather rather more technical. So he it's uh, Okay, perhaps I have no time to uh, speak about uh, uh, asymptotically uh, optimality uh, for alpha bigger than one, but it's also um, interesting applications of some ideas um, related to uh, moment estimates of system of unimodular numbers going to castles, which also seems not too much related to the topic, but actually it turns out to relate it uh, very, very closely. Well, and it uh, seems uh, my time is exhausted, uh, so it's a good time to stop, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Just a second. Sorry? Uh, I, 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 would, uh, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, the motivation of uh, such a uh, problem is electronic, uh, electrostatic. <laughs> um, what about a sp uh, specialist in electrostatic? Uh, do you know about your results? Well, actually, I don't know, because um, you know that the motivation is uh, something uh, lying in the very, very background, but um, after that we go a bit far, and moreover, uh, you know that this uh, the pro the problem uh, of uh, Chui is of course uh, related with some electrostatic problem, but it's a plain problem. But you know that we are living in three dimensional space, uh, so it of course it's related, but uh, it's not not good from the point of view of fun functional analysis uh, uh, such of uh, this. Uh, fractional uh, because it's not a uh, linear space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other comments, questions? Hmm? Sorry? 
So maybe someone uh, from online audience would like to ask something. It's a good time. Uh, maybe I have one short question about uh, this Newton uh, result. Is it possible to describe in a few words uh, how he, he proves at ah. least an approach? Ah. You mean Newman? Yeah, yeah, Newman, sorry. Newman, no. In a, well, it's, uh, it's just a tricky estimate, more or less uh, one page no more. It's oh, really, really tricky. It's a really tricky estimate. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.